Good morning. How y'all doing this morning? <laughs> That's awesome. Frank, you never let me down. I appreciate that. <laughs> hey, I want to welcome all of our friends and family on, uh, online right now. Thank you. You could have been anywhere else on the internet, but you chose to be with us. So thank you uh, for being here today. If you're a guest, welcome. My name is Brandon. I'm one of the pastors here on staff. Uh, rumor has it that today is Mother's Day. Yeah, happy Mother's Day. So uh, if you don't mind, uh, I'm going to pray for all the moms. Are you guys okay with that? I was going to do it anyways, even if you didn't want me to. So uh, Father God, we lift up all the moms to you. Man, uh, thank you for their patience, their kindness, their gentleness, their compassion that they have. Lord, thank you for moms and just the way that you've put that in their DNA. And Lord, I lift up all the ladies who weren't able to have children, but man, they're still a mom. They're still mother and uh, children, and maybe even some adult children at this point. But Lord, thank you. So we lift up all the moms to you, and we just ask for a blessing over them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Hey, we got a couple of quick announcements here for you guys. Fun Friday is this Friday, so this is K through fifth grade, and this one is like bananas because they're gonna have a Nerf night, and so there's like Nerf bullets flying all over the place, and then there's like this calm, serenity type of place where they, they do the spa, and it smells like lavender, and it's just really nice. Uh, so it's been fun where I come here, and it's like controlled chaos, mind you, controlled chaos, with the Nerf guns, but then you'd walk to this other part of the church and like, yeah, you smell the lavender, the, the decibel level is like half of what it is with the Nerf guns. But if you know any students that are in K through fifth grade, please have them here, fun Friday, six o'clock, it's gonna be a lot of fun. And this is a way to invite families who aren't part of Radiant Life. Do the sleepover thing. Have your, your students, friends come, stay the night, you bring them to the fun Friday and you feed them a bunch of pancakes Saturday morning. It'll be a great time, I planned it all out for you. See how easy that is? So uh, speaking of kids, you may have noticed as you came in, at least more of those doors over there, are some envelopes that have numbers on them. Uh, we're doing a fundraiser for Kids Camp. Uh, we've been partnering with this camp up in Hastings, Michigan. Uh, we've been going there for a really long time. All of my kids have been there. I asked my two youngest, like, hey, what, what did you like about camp? And they love how there's a different theme each week. They said the food wasn't bad, which I found was humorous. And then uh, they do. They engage the word, and they have adventures. They play games. It's just a really cool uh, time. And it's a little bit more rustic, and it's just a slower pace, which is really cool. And what happens a lot at this camp is students will surrender their lives over to Jesus or rededicate their lives to Jesus. And so it's just been a wonderful place for God to use. So I'm totally blanking on the age range here, but I, I believe it's up to the middle school age. And so it's, it's geared more for the younger kids so kind of going back to the envelopes, the envelopes is a fundraiser for the kids. So what you'll notice is there's different numbers on the envelope. So what we're asking is whatever number you grab, that's how much money you put in the envelope, okay? And then you can seal that up and then you can drop those envelopes off at the seat attendants in the basket and you can do that after service. So man, I wanna encourage you, set a record. I mean, who's gonna grab 10 envelopes? How cool would that be? I think someone in here could grab 10 envelopes and fill each one of them. I'm just, just challenging you on that thought. Anyways, ladies, we have an event for you, outdoor, refresh, and fun. Apparently it has something to do with pouring paint. So I think what you're gonna do is get paint, and I think you're gonna pour it out. I don't know what else, yeah, thank you, Dave, yes. Thank you for supporting me in that, I appreciate that. 
Uh, yeah, I don't know exactly what that looks like, but it sounds like fun to me. Uh, but they're gonna have some other activities at this event, and so they wanna do it outside, so keep an eye on our social media, just in the event that the weather is bad and we need to postpone the event because we, we desire to have this event outside. So ladies, get signed up for that, and that, that door's even opened up for some teenagers as well. So how cool would that be to get you old ladies and the young ladies mixed together? Because I think there's something cool about generations mixing together. Why are you taking that as an insult? All right, I need a soapbox. I'm getting ready. Old people, we need you. You have life experiences, good and bad, that can speak life into the young generation. We need you guys to mix. I'm gonna start preaching a message before Pastor Ryan gets up here. Generations need to mix, I'm just saying. Thank you for that amen back there. I appreciate that. That fills my tank. Church family, Thank you for stepping into the discipline of giving, that you trust God so much that you can't help but to give back to him. He's the one that provided it anyways, and you step into that, you live by faith. Thank you for doing that. And I wanna encourage you, if you haven't taken that step, man, this is like the one area that we can challenge God in. And I'm not saying that if you trust him and tithe, all of a sudden you're gonna have a mansion and a really nice car. No, he's gonna provide for your needs. He shows up. And I can testify to that. Like, man, the transmission went out. I wasn't sure how I was gonna, how to pay for it. Man, the furnace went out. I've got two babies in the house. God provided all along the way. And I know many of you have stories like that too, where God provided for your needs because you trusted him when it came to your finances. So you can see the screen, multiple ways that you can do that. Church family, would you stand with me? We're gonna transition into worship through song and through the word and I, God was moving in first service. I know he's gonna move in this service. Full expectancy of that. Did you come here expecting God to move here today? Good, because he's gonna move here today. So whether he uses a song lyric or a Bible verse or Pastor Ryan says something, God is going to move here today and I fully believe in that. So Holy Spirit of God, we invite you into this place. We love you so much. Thank you for what you already did here this morning and we have full expectancy of you touching people's lives here today. So Jesus, some of us, we came into this space with distractions. Would you help us to put those things aside and help us to be here, now, present, in this moment. Would your holy presence speak to our hearts and to our minds here today? Man, we give you all the honor, glory, and praise. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said.
become vinous like blazing wildfire. singing is out of Psalm 19, and we've introduced this song a couple times, but um, I'm just going to read through Psalm 19. It's, I'm just amazed at how many times, like every time I read scripture, even if I've read it before, there's something new that the Lord will speak to me out of it, and so, yeah, just, I'm just going to read through this, so... The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. Day after day, they pour forth speech. Night after night, they display knowledge. There's no speech or language where their voice is not heard. Their voice goes out into all the earth, their words to the ends of the earth. In the heavens, he has pitched a tent for the sun, which is like a bridegroom coming forth from his pavilion, like a champion rejoicing to run his course. It rises at one end of the heavens and makes its circuit to the other. Nothing is hidden from its heat. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The statutes of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, giving joy to the heart. The commands of the Lord are radiant, giving light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are sure and altogether righteous. They are more precious than gold, than much pure gold. They are sweeter than honey, than honey from the comb. By them is your servant warned. In keeping them, there is great reward. Who can discern his errors? Forgive my hidden faults. Keep your servant also from willful sins. May they not rule over me. Then I will be blameless, innocent of great transgression. May the word of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Dripping on my soul 
I count on one thing The same God that never fails Will not fail me now You won't fail me now In the waiting The same God who's never late Is working all things out You're working all things out good and all the time and for those that don't do church you said what just happened right there right just saying about the goodness of God I think it's good for us to be reminded of the goodness of God especially when life comes our way and we feel that we're in the valley if you're in the valley this morning God is there with you Sometimes the valley is a short season. For others, it's longer. The question is, will you still depend on him no matter how long the valley experience may be? Remain strong in his faithfulness and go through it, not by our might, not by our strength, but his strength, amen? You guys came to worship this morning. 
you did. I love this. I want to read something to you. Just having my quiet time this morning. I just felt like the Lord said before we get into the word. Oh, don't worry. The, the band will be back up at the end for some songs. I just really felt like this was the, the heart of the atmosphere the spirit was trying to do here this morning. Uh, Paul and Silas went away and they entered a town called Berea. And it said upon their arrival, they went into the synagogues of the Jews, which the synagogues was like the church for the Jews. It says the people here were of more noble character than those in Thessalonica. They chased them out of Thessalonica. And it says they received the word with eagerness. They received the word with eagerness. I think there are times that we come into a building and do services and our mind is ready to receive but our hearts aren't. I want to pray for us this morning and for those that are watching online as well that we would be like the Bereans that our hearts will be eager to receive the word of God. Amen? So if you will, would you open your arms just like this, like you're going to receive something. And I want to pray a blessing and a prayer over us as we enter into the Word. Heavenly Father, you see our posture of openness, and we ask that we would receive everything you have for us this morning. We're open to you. May our mind be eager to receive, and may our hearts be eager to receive. As we have this posture of openness, like we're receiving, Holy Spirit, will you do something mighty inside of us? May we receive the fullness of you, God. May we never settle, but may minds and hearts be prepared. Good soil for your word to land in and plant this morning. Almighty God, we love you. You are good. When we're not, you are good. When we're in the valley, you are good. We give you our hearts and our minds here this morning. And we pray that in the matchless name of Jesus Christ. And all God's people said, amen. You may have a seat. Well, church family, it's good to be with you guys this morning. Uh, if you don't know who I am, I'm Ryan. I'm our lead pastor. Some of our regular attenders forgot who I am since I haven't spoken in four weeks. Uh, you know, my, my one word for the year. So every year we begin uh, this idea of seeking the Lord for one word. You know, instead of like 10 New Year's resolutions, we seek one word, that the Lord would use that one word for us and to move in our lives. And my word was develop. The reason why I didn't want that word develop is because I was reading scripture and um, unfortunately the Lord was doing a work on uh, Moses' life and uh, Moses had to go through the wilderness in order to be developed. And I was like, God, take the word back. I don't want that. Uh, but I think one of the reasons why the Lord gave me that is because of the sickness and illness that I hit in, um, in January and into February, I was out, but... What I truly believe is, is developing leaders within the church. And uh, church should never be, and Pastor Brandon said it last week, church should never be about a personality on the stage. It should always be about Jesus Christ, no matter who's on this stage preaching the word of God. I love it. I love it. But let me tell you, we got some other great preachers as well. Pastor Brandon has done a great job. Pastor Josh, I told Pastor Josh two weeks ago, three weeks ago, I said, that's the best message you've ever given. That's the best message you've ever given. In my opinion, my opinion, others of you could say, no, the other one he did was better. I just think that was his best, best message. I love seeing their development. I love seeing Pam come on stage and bring you the word a few weeks back, right? Got an ovation there, Pam, All right? I just love seeing the body of Christ. It's not about one person. Well, it is. His name is Jesus. There it is, right? 
Hey, we're in a series together called Awake in the Book of Acts. And I hope you guys are enjoying it. Man, it's one of my favorite books in the Bible. The Acts, the actions of the early church. We get a glimpse, praise God, that we get a glimpse into the early church so we know what they did. We know how to do church. We know what the Spirit of God did and moved so you and I can have an example to follow. And I love the book of Acts. I remember having a a quiet time in Buchanan, Michigan at a staff retreat that we took six, seven years ago, whenever that was. And I sat on the porch of this house overlooking the St. Joseph River. And I just got done with Acts chapter two and I wrote at the top of my Bible, come alive. I saw the church for the very first time coming alive. And that's what I believe that our church is becoming. A church that is fully alive in Jesus Christ. I also jumped into that river with a couple other pastors, swam across that river, and had the biggest spider land on my shoulder. It was this big. (laughs) Don't look, they're lying to you. I screamed like a little girl and flung that massive spider off me. Stop. (laughs) They're making fun of me over there. That was scary. Acts chapter 8 is where we're going to pick up today. I want to get us to just a brief review, if you missed last week, where Pastor Brandon had us, okay, for the very first time. Acts chapter 8, the gospel message begins to spread outside of Jerusalem. And here's uh, the map that Pastor Brandon showed us last week, right, with Jerusalem being the center that the gospel message, and it begins to spread. Do you remember why the gospel message begins to spread? persecution. Persecution. Listen, God can use your troubles for his purpose. Know that. And he used the troubles of persecution to spread his word in many, 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 many get saved. Churches start appealing, appearing all over the place. And the Jesus movement has now begun. In 2,000 years, it's still moving. And nothing can stop the church of God. And so it begins to spread and it reaches up through persecution. And there's roads in the ancient world, thanks to the Romans. The Roman Empire that's ruling the ancient world had all this money and they built roads. And I loved how God's sitting there. I wonder if God's going, man, an evil empire I will use for good because you don't know. You think you're doing things for evil, but I'm going to use your roads to spread my news. And it's awesome, and the, and the gospel spreads. And finally, it moves up to a region called Samaria. And here's a couple um, of the ruins in that region from some cities in that region. Now, the Jews weren't quite fond of this region, the Samaritans as it's known. And here's a picture of a theater that would have set 500 plus people. The reason why is because the Older Testament, we're told that God says, don't intermarry. Because if you intermarry, listen, they're going to lead you to pagan gods that you're going to worship. So don't intermarry. And the issue that happened was the Jews that stayed behind in the Babylonian exile in 586 BC stayed there and the Babylonians kind of took other territories and they stayed there in the region of Samaria and they intermarried with the pagans. And so the Jews moved back, rebuild all the city in Jerusalem, rebuild the temple, there and what's now they look at up north to Samaritans and say, You're not pure Jews, you intermarried into pagan religion. So they considered themselves kind of enemies. They did everything in their power to avoid going through that region because they didn't like them that much because they fell away from God's law. And then Acts 8 8, the word is getting there and the people are getting saved. In Acts 8 8, it says this So there was great what, friends? Great joy in that city. Joy is not based on circumstance. Joy is based on our salvation in Jesus Christ. We go through tough stuff, do we not? But my joy and happiness isn't found there. It's found in Christ and Christ alone. And even through the valley, I can have joy. It still hurts. But I find joy in Jesus. 
And there's great joy in that city. May wherever you and I go and we preach the gospel, may we be a radiant city of joy. Not this false facade of joy, but true. I got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Come on now. Christians ought to have that joy down in my, what? Come on. It ought to be there, rooted. We ought to be the most joy-filled human beings on planet Earth. Why? We have the only message, and Jesus Christ has changed us. Whoo! I haven't even gotten to Acts 8, 9 through 25 yet. That's where we're going now, okay? So if you got your Bible, you got your tablet, you want to turn to Acts 8. We'll pick up with Pastor, where Pastor Brandon left off, Acts 8, 9 through 25. Titled this message, The Faith That Isn't. The Faith That Isn't. We're going to look at a pretty powerful story. One that may rattle you. Next week, I hope you don't miss next week. Next week is a, another powerful story. It's awesome how these two stories kind of go hand in hand. They're not quite juxtaposed to each other. That's my new favorite term, juxtaposed, to pin against. These stories quite aren't like that, but close to it. You're going to see in today how one person responds to the gospel, and next week we're going to see how another person responds to the gospel message. So if you're there at Acts 8, 9 through 25, let me hear you say word. We get into the word, so the word, let's go, Acts 8. A man named Simon had previously practiced sorcery in that city and amazed the Samaritan people while claiming to be somebody great. They all paid attention to him from the least of them to the greatest, and they said, this man is called the great power of God. Now pause for a moment. The, the, they meet this man named Simon the sorcerer that's doing this magic, and the Samaritans think that he's the great power of God. What, he, what is wrong in this statement is that he's not using the power of God, but the power of Satan. Sorcery. Evil magic. The word here is for sorcery in the New Testament is the Greek word pharmakia. Let me hear you say pharmakia. Which we get the word pharmacy from, right? Drugs. It's not just this magic. It encompasses these three. It encompasses drug use, spells, and potions, those three. Simon is indulging in pharmacia. Drug use, spells, potions. Listen, drug use is still rampant today. We still have pharmacia existing today. It's still running rampant. And here's the danger, friends. Here's the danger. I think it's even cre creeping into Christianity. Uh, the other day, I was, or not the other day, it was a couple of years ago, I, I was in San Diego on the beach. My wife and I went out to dinner. It was late at night. I was grabbing her hand. I don't even know if you remember this, babe. And we were strolling along the sidewalk. And this man, totally assuming he's engaged in pharmacia, drug use, is screaming. Was he on his bike? You don't remember. He's probably on his bike. Imagine that. He's on his bike, pedaling real slow, yelling, I'm in command. No, you're in command. He's pedaling. He's like, I'm in command. No, you're the commander. You are the commander. And going, and I'll, I'll be honest, my flesh grabbed my wife's hand. I'm like, we got to get out of here. We got to get out of here. And what I realized, hindsight now, where I'm at, I do believe that was a demonic activity of the drugs in his life. And he was having a conversation with the demonic world. This is my interpretation. With the, de with the demonic world of who's the commander of his life. And he was bowing down to the commander of a demonic entity in his life. I realized in that moment, hindsight, I wish I had the Holy Spirit boldness to stop in my tracks, let go of my wife's hand and lay hands on that man and say, in the name of Jesus, come out of you. He needed freedom. And instead, my flesh scared me off. I'm sitting there going, man, we, 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 we Christians need holy boldness. And holy boldness, we talked about that four weeks ago, you remember? Holy boldness only comes from the filling of the Holy Spirit in your life. 
And I know I needed it in that moment. Listen, you as a child of God have the power and authority over the demonic world. We got to realize, we got to stop and think that the, there's no spiritual realm. Listen, there's an enemy of your soul that's after you, and he's got an army known as de- demons, right? Scripture, Pastor Brandon hit on it last week. Scripture doesn't have a whole lot of, on it, but enough to tell us it's real, but we have power and authority over it. Because you are covered in the blood of Jesus Christ. You cannot be possessed as a Christian by a demon, but you can be oppressed. But you cannot be possessed because you have been bought by the blood of Jesus Christ. Man, what would it look like to rise up as an army of God and say, no, we have power and authority. Let's take back the brokenness and heal for the name of Jesus Christ. I know some of us are like, what is he talking about? Like exorcism and stuff? Dude, that stuff scares me too. Don't get me wrong. I hope I never have to perform one, but I will know this, if I do, power and authority through God, not in my own might. And man, what would it look like to live more like that? Here's the danger, pharmakia. Let me address this. As your pastor, I love you. And there are some topics that I have to hit on with grace and truth. I think pharmakia is hitting Christians with the use of marijuana. Don't run out of this room yet. I think there's some absolutely some medicinal purposes. I think we definitely need some major reform on how we get this stuff. But listen, if you're just using it for regular use because you're stressed out, you're turning to pharmakia and not turning to the true healer, which his name is Jesus Christ. Please hear that. I love you. But may we surrender some things that the demonic world can actually creep in and use as a foothold in our lives. I quit watching horror movies. I used to love being scared, which is dumb. (laughs) That's just stupid. I used to watch them. I'm like, I loved like, my wife would not be around. She hates that stuff. And I would be around when she's gone and had my covers up, you know, and even those scary moments, I'm like, oh, no. You know, and then you like, peek, oh, no, no, no. I used to do that, and I realized that's dumb. And then what God taught me in the moment is, Ryan, the enemy will use that as a foothold in your life, and gone forever. I haven't watched one since. That's my life and walk with Christ. But I'm afraid that we, the, the, the recreational use is, ah, it's just recreational. Be careful. Be careful. Seek the Lord. Seek the Lord. Seek who? Please be careful. Please be careful. Good. No one, ever, we're still out here. We're still friends. Turn to your neighbor and say, he still loves you. He still loves you. All right, let's go. Here we go. They were attentive to him, meaning Simon, because he had amazed them with his sorceries for a long time. But when they believed Philip, as he proclaimed the goodness about the kingdom of God in the name of Jesus Christ, both men and women were baptized. What were they doing? Proclaiming the goodness about the kingdom of God. Let me ask you a question. Proclaiming. When people look at you, what is your life proclaiming? Is it proclaiming the kingdom and goodness of God? Or does it look like a lot of self in there? Pride, deceitfulness, things that you want to do. Or is it walking around showing the goodness and kingdom of God? What's your life? Proclaiming. And then there's a beautiful correlation in that verse, in verse um, 12. There's a beautiful correlation. Look at these two words. It says this, but when they believed Philip, both men and women were, what's the one word? They were what? (laughs) One more time, they were what? They were baptized. They were baptized. Get this, all in the book of Acts. People believed, they were baptized. Believed, Baptized, believed, baptized, believed, baptized, believed, baptized. Baptism is not an option in our faith. I would say it's a mandate in our faith. Baptism is not a salvation issue. Salvation is found in Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone, amen? But this isn't a, "Eh, now I'm in the faith. Eh." If If I want to, I will. Jesus Christ, disciples of Jesus, lean in. He set that example. And if you follow in the way of Jesus, then so shall we. Let's get baptized. 
Here's the importance of baptism. You confess the gospel through baptism. This is why I love it that it's in the local church. That when you are buried symbolically into the water, the death of Jesus, resurrected, that you are proclaiming new life in Christ to my brothers and sisters that will help me grow in my faith, known as discipleship. I love baptism. It's so key. It is so key. Yes. Was it really easy in the ancient world? Yes. Why? Is it because they had more water than us? No. The reason why is because there were mikvahs everywhere. Let me hear you say mikvah. Mikvah was a ritual bath. They were everywhere in the ancient world, all in the villages and towns. So it's really quick, really quick. You read more in Acts. It says like one person got saved, their whole household got saved, then they baptized people, right? And then they would just find that nearest mikvah. mikvah. They would walk down the stairs exactly like this. They would just walk down the stairs. You would come down, baptism. We ought to be baptized. Here's what um, Romans says. Paul says this, what then, what should we say then? Should we continue in sin so that grace may multiply? Absolutely not. How can we who died to sin still live in it? Listen to this for a moment. He says, how can we who died to sin still live in it? And I know we look at that verse and be like, oh, I still got some sin in my life. But that just says, I'm dead to it. How do I still live in it? Please lean lean in. We're not talking perfection, no, but pursuit of holiness, yes. There's a difference here. There's a difference. Are you pursuing holiness in your life? And maybe you ought to stop trying to avoid sin and let the power of Christ transform you so you can avoid the sin. Make sense? I had one yes. This is great. Come on, chair. I need, I need a little bit more help. You guys awake? Yes. All right, I heard yeses. Therefore, you set the tone now. Here we go. Here's the rest of that Romans verse. Or are you unaware that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Remember, it's that dunking, right? We ought to not get scared of the word baptism. It just means immersed, to immerse oneself. And then he goes on, therefore we're buried with him by baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too may walk in newness of life. Isn't that beautiful? This is why as a church, I love celebrating baptism. I love it. This is the celebration because it's a public declaration of the gospel that I'm made new. This is why I love doing baptism services. I wish we had baptism every single week. I bet you there would be one person to come up and get baptized to say, yes, this is my next step. We had a beautiful prayer moment last service that we actually prayed. This person said, I know I need to get baptized. Will you pray for a boldness next time? It's like, absolutely. Pastor Brandon and I laid hands on that individual and we prayed for a holy boldness, a holy courage that next time they know the stirring inside of them that they would get baptized. So they believed and they got baptized. Story continues in Acts. Even Simon himself believed So we have this sorcerer that dabbles in magic, believing the good news about the kingdom of God. And after was baptized, and now he followed, that's supposed to say Philip, by the way, not Simon. He can't follow himself. Okay, so that's supposed to say Philip. He followed Philip everywhere, and watch this. He's amazed as he observed the signs and great miracles that were being performed. Everything on the outside looks like the sorcerer has faith, does it not? He believed. He was baptized. He followed Philip to try to understand the way about this kingdom of God. He's amazed. He's seen the signs and great miracles from God. Here's what I'm really fearful of. It looks great on the outside, but it's deficient on the inside. I'm fearful as a pastor, as a lead pastor of a local church, 
that this may describe a lot of Christians today. It appears, it appears that they have it all together. You come to church, you do the church thing, but inside you are no more transformed by Christ. You just went through the rituals. I said the prayer, I was baptized, now I just come to church. And there's so much more. A.W. Tozer says this. He says, it's my opinion that tens of thousands of people, if not millions, have been brought into some kind of religious experience by accepting Christ, and they have not been saved. If your Christian conversion did not reverse the direction of your life, if it did not transform it, then you are not converted at all. I'm glad he said it, not me. There's so much truth there. I can't wait to talk. I mean, we're going to go more into depth next week about it. I'm already, I got to not say too much about next week because I want you to come back. And I'm going to give you one message, not two. If you grew up in church, you may know this song. If you're a little kid, you may know this. If you're saved and you know it, then your life will. Come on. Come on. Did you hear it? If you're saved and you know it, then your life will surely show it. If your Christian conversion did not reverse the direction of your life, it did not transform it, then you are not converted at all. You will bear fruit. There will be evidence of a converted, transformed life in Christ Jesus. But what about Simon? He looks good on the outside. It said he believed, was baptized, now he's following. Let's jump into the rest of the story. When the apostles who were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them. So they take a trek up north to Samaria from Jerusalem. After they went, it says down, don't, like it is up. The Bible doesn't lie, it's just their language of always saying going down somewhere, right? Not directional, just going to a destination. Does that make sense? Good, five of you. Okay, here we go. Y'all tricked me. You guys were really excited like five minutes ago. Tricky, tricky. Right? Watch this. They prayed for them to receive the Holy Spirit because he had not yet come down on any of them. See, there, there, there is a faith that is deficient. It's an incomplete faith. It's a faith that is there but isn't. It's got Jesus, believed in Jesus, but there's something missing. It's deficient. It's the Spirit of God. And then the story goes, they had only been baptized. Remember what baptism means? It means to immerse. Okay, remember that. They'd only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then Peter and John laid their hands on them, and look what happens. And they received the Holy Spirit. They laid their hands on the Samaritans. And now the Samaritans, deficient in their faith, came complete because they received the Spirit of God. There is an experience in their faith with Holy Spirit that these Samaritans did not know until the apostles came and laid hands on them and prayed. David Guzik, pastor and author and commentator on the book of Acts, he says this about this moment. He said, often the empowering and filling of the Holy Spirit is received as hands are laid on a person and prayer is offered, is offering to them. We should always be ready to receive whatever special graces and gifts God has to give us through the laying on of hands. I, as your lead pastor, desire that we would be a church that just comes alive in Jesus Christ. That if we see things in scripture, such as people 
laying hands on other people, that you and I would be willing to do that as well. That we will lay hands of prayer. See, the infilling of Holy Spirit is something we should always desire and seek. It always should be something we desire and seek to have more of him. Why? Because there is a faith that is deficient. There is a faith that is deficient. And all of a sudden, Simon the sorcerer sees these people have the power of the Spirit on them now. And Simon's going to say, I want that too. When Simon saw that the Spirit was given through the laying on of the apostles' hands, he offered them money, saying, give me this power also, so that anyone I lay hands on may receive the Holy Spirit. He's trying to buy the power and the move of God. Listen, you can't buy the move of God. Your faith increases the move of God. It is by faith that you and I stand out and see the move of God and the work of God happening in our lives. But Simon goes, oh, here's some money. Can I buy that? I want that too. And here's the issue. When it becomes with Christians and Holy Spirit, many of us have a deficient faith because we have not allowed Holy Spirit to do what Holy Spirit needs to do inside of us. Because often we'll use Holy Spirit as a power to control rather than a person who rules our life. Because you know why? What happens if I actually step in to the fullness of the Spirit in my life and I actually open that door? and go through with it. Will friends think I'm weird? Like, I, I, I like my status. I like being cool and popular at school. Now friends will think like I'm some holy roller, weird holy ghost person now. Are you afraid of, I like control enough? I don't know what's gonna happen if the spirit rules my life anymore. I like making A, B, and C and dragging the spirit along in it, but not giving control. See, so many Christians, I believe, today, we're good with one door. We're good with this one. You know why we're good with Jesus? He got me out of hell. And most of our conversion it's not a conversion. Listen to this. It's not a conversion because we're absolutely in distress over our sin that separates us. It's a conversion that says, thank you, I'll open the door. Just make sure I don't rot in hell. And we swing open this door. We say, praise Jesus, I'm not going to hell. I did, I did the Christian thing. And now all I have to do is attend church, say a few prayers. God, did you at least see me at church, right? I'm, do, I'm doing the thing. I'm, I'm doing the Christian thing, right? But there's something else. Simon the sorcerer, it feels like on the outside, opened the door to Christ. But he saw something here that he didn't have, and he wanted to buy it. And here is how Peter tells him no. He says, but Peter told him, may your silver be destroyed with you. Ouch. May it be destroyed with you because you thought you could obtain, not the fig, it's supposed to be the gift, okay? The gift of God with money. I'm getting hungry, so figs sound good right now. All right. You can't. Look what he says. You have no part or share in this matter because your heart is not right before God. Your heart, it's a heart issue, Simon. It appeared 
heard you did the right thing. You made a decision for Christ, but you're not a disciple of Christ. And then he says this. Peter sees a little bit of his heart. And this is what he tells Simon the sorcerer. He says, therefore, repent of your wickedness of yours. There's wickedness here. And pray to the Lord that, if possible, your heart's intent may be forgiven. For I see you are poisoned by bitterness and bound by wickedness. But it looked like from the outside, he believed, he baptized, and followed. And Peter's like, no, your faith is deficient. Simon, and you will have no part of us. For Romans, in the book of Romans, chapter 6, verse 11, we catch a glimpse of something that's powerful with Jesus Christ and your sin. I wonder how many of us right now can look at that verse and say, you know what, Pastor, I, I do have bitterness right now. I, there is some, I don't like calling it wickedness, but there, there's sin. Can we just call sin, sin, and stop calling it a mistake? Listen, you can't do anything with mistakes, but with sin, I can be forgiven through the blood of Jesus Christ. Jesus came, that's the gospel message. No more mistake, Ah, oh, I just messed up. No, you sin. Here's the good news, I got a remedy for it. His name is Jesus, right? Oh, yeah, that's good. All right, here's what it says. So you two consider yourselves, what's that one word? Dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. Well, Pastor, I, you know, there's some things that, that trip me up in life. I realize that. Remember, perfection, no. Pursuit of holiness, yes. But here, get this. If you always walk around saying, I'm just going to be a sinner and this is my my thing and I'm just going to do that, please listen, you got to change your theology because then you're saying sin has greater power than the Almighty God does in your life. That right there alone is a theological doctrinal issue you have. There is nothing greater than God. There is nothing greater than God. Your sin feels strong, but my God is greater than that sin. Know that and walk in that. You are dead to sin and alive in God. So Simon goes, oh, you called some things out in me, Peter. The wickedness, the bitterness. My heart's intent isn't wrong between this Jesus and this Holy Spirit power. He goes, oh, I got an idea. X. All right. Uh, Pray to the Lord for me, Simon replied, so that nothing you have said may happen to me. So after they testified and spoken the word of the Lord, they traveled back to Jerusalem, preaching the gospel in many villages of the Samaritans. It's getting on here. Please hear There is a faith that is deficient. Don't settle and think, because I made a decision, I swung the door open, I'm good. There's a faith that is deficient that needs the indwelling power of Holy Spirit in our lives. And please lean in. We are not designed to run this life without the power of Holy Spirit filling our lives. And you wonder, why does my spiritual tank in my life feel like I'm on E all the time? Why? I would contest to you that there are a lot of Christians spiritually sleeping and just need to say, Holy Spirit, I need you and be willing to open the door with Holy Spirit. How do you know you're alive? I know I'm alive not because I have a birth certificate. 
I know I'm alive because I'm breathing. How do I know I'm a disciple of Christ, a true Christian? Not because I made a decision one time. I said the sinner's prayer one time. I know I'm alive and I know I'm a Christian because the Spirit of God, the breath, the ruach, the pneuma, the breath of God is breathing into me and I know I'm alive. For God's word says, the Spirit of God will testify to your spirit that you are a son and daughter of his. Do you know the Holy Spirit? Job 6, 4, uh, 66 verse 4 says, The Spirit of God has made, and the breath of the Almighty gives me life. John 6, th- uh, 63 says, The Spirit is the one who gives life. And in Acts chapter 19, we'll get to it at some point through this series. Acts chapter 19 says, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? And then look at the response. No, they told them, We haven't even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a gift upon salvation. The Holy Spirit resides in you. The question is, will you allow the Spirit of God to birth life into you or not, or keep him behind a door? Don't get too crazy, Holy Spirit. I can't act weird in front of my friend. They can't know. They can know I kind of like Jesus, but this, eh. Because in the Acts, when Peter spoke with boldness, he says this. Peter replied, repent and be baptized. Oh, there's that word again. You can't unsee baptism now. It's everywhere. Repent, turn your direction, and be baptized, each and every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of the sins. And look what that, that's salvation. Here you go, ready? And you will receive the what? What is he? The gift of the Holy Spirit. Praise team, make your way up. Worship team. There is a gap with Jesus and Holy Spirit. The gap between Jesus and the fullness of Holy Spirit is the intent of your heart. Simon, it's your heart's intent. You're off. That's why you can't receive it. It's your heart's intent. The gap is your heart's intent. Let me explain my story. We as staff a couple of years ago read through a book together and um, I journaled through it. Sometimes at the end of chapters, if you ever read a book, there's like discussion questions. Most of the time I like never ever read them or write answers in the book. But I did with this one. We studied the Holy Spirit together. And I wanna share with you just a couple highlights of my experience realizing there was a gap between my walk with Christ and being completely filled in trusting the Holy Spirit. Before you began this study, who did you see the Holy, or how did you understand the Holy Spirit to be? Here's my answer. A little frightening and unknown. That's why I didn't want to fully open that door. I knew he was here, but I wanted to control him to make sure he didn't do anything crazy that I thought was crazy. A little further, my walk. The key to an abundant life is living into God's power and presence. A little further. question is, have you been frantically trying to change your life? 
I wrote, no, but my desire is for a better understanding of the Holy Spirit and to experience the full expression of his presence in my life. In the very end, are you regularly or rarely praying in the Spirit? I said, no. I'm asking for it. I'm asking for it. Amen. See, for a while, I was happy that Jesus saved me. Because as a kid, you know, fire and hell sound pretty scary. So as a kid, I'm like, yeah, my parents take me to church. I'll gladly open that door for Jesus. But growing up, I would visit other churches with my friends that were a lot more, what I would say, charismatic or Pentecostal than I was used to. And throughout my own experience, I began to see what I could look at Scripture to see some gifts of the Spirit that I could look at, examine Scripture and say, it feels out of order. It feels abused. And so I never wanted to open this door. And the first time I ever experienced the Holy Spirit in my life was in seventh grade in the arms of Bill Tekela, if you know him. Weeping down at the front as he embraced me. Shaking, not everything, not everyone shakes, but like I was like, I knew in the moment, like this is in a love that I've never experienced before. This is a feeling like I've never experienced before. And it was in his arms. I remember it like it was yesterday. But what I saw still scared me, even into my adulthood. I knew he was here. But it was like, oh, oh, man, I, I saw this, like, what we call slain in the spirit. And I was like, I don't want to act like that, God. I'll be honest with you. It's like, I don't want that. If that's what the filling of your spirit is, I'm, I'm good with him just behind the door of my heart. I'm good. But I was realizing... I was trying to do this Christian life on empty without the true fuel. That's Holy Spirit. The part of the Godhead that's in us. The Father's on his throne. The Son, Jesus, it is, is at his right hand. But the Spirit of God is the one in operation today on earth. I had to say, I'm ready to finally, whatever you have for me, I'm ready to open that door and walk through with you. Because I trust the word of God where it says, God, our Father, is a good gift giver. And I realize He can heal and reform my false belief that I had about the Spirit of God. So I want to ask you a question this morning. What in your heart is holding you back? You may have gone through this door. And we praise Jesus for it, absolutely. But if you let the Spirit do what the Spirit wants to do in your life, every day I'm asking, every morning, Holy Spirit, come fill and overflow my life. And I don't think I'm too weird yet, guys. Others of you have different opinions, I know. If we never open that door, we can never live into Galatians 5. I say then, walk by the Spirit, 
But if you are led by the Spirit, if we live by the Spirit, let us also keep in step with the Spirit. We'll never fulfill these verses in our life if you've never opened the door. And I want to close with this. Remember Peter and John get there? And what's the first thing they do? They laid their hands on them and they received the Holy Spirit. We can't not not have a service and have the word jump out at us and not do this. I want to be a people, a community of brothers and sisters that's sitting there going, I want everything that you have to offer. So we're going to sing a closing song together, a medley, which means multiple songs. Okay. I'm going to ask the prayer team to go to the banners, please. If you are a prayer team, come to the banners. We're going to have Rasika, Pam, this is Pastor Karen right here, please, at the stage. Uh, Pastor Josh, you good with Pastor Brandon? And then myself, we'll be, the three of us will be here. But maybe for you, it's like, man, I, I want more. There's no coincidence we have these shirts with the, like a dove and fire. That What does this say? We need you more. We need more of him. And I want to say one thing, though. For us that are going to pray for you, we'll lay hands. We'll pray for anything you bring us with or bring to us. But allow this fear to subside. We are not fruit inspectors, but gardeners to see the fruit of faith formed in others. We're not here to judge. We're here to garden your heart so that the fruit of Christ may grow. I ask the Lord, every time I preach, Lord, is there one thing, one thing, one thing, Lord, one thing that you want to use me in? And I heard it as clear as day. Ask him this. Are you willing to step into the fullness God has for you? Are you willing to step into the fullness that I have for you. And the fullness is deficient until you open the door of Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, what are you saying to me? So church family, will you please stand? And we're gonna sing just a love for Jesus. The pastors and the prayer partners, they'll be down ready to lift us all up in prayer lift you up and pray to lay hands and just pray. Let me pray for us as we move into that time. Jesus, we thank you that for many of us, we've opened that door and we know that you are our savior, but truly we have not said, Jesus, you are Lord, your master. And many of us, we've kept that gift absolutely shut in our hearts. We haven't opened the gift of the spirit. We for whatever reason, the, the gap that's there is our heart's intent. So Father, would you bring that to light? Would you fill, not, fill us with the fullness of you? We pray that in the matchless name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let's sing. And if you would love prayer, we're ready to lift you up.
sing this one more time. This time we're just going to switch the words up a little bit so that you can connect with Holy Spirit and just kind of have a personal intimacy with him right here. We're going to change the words to Jesus, I love you, instead of Jesus, we love you. It's just very simple, small change, but just make it a, a pure and simple change. have to make a choice and you will need this Holy Spirit for your very survival. So Holy Spirit of God, would you minister to us right now in these moments? Maybe some of us are standing in this gap. 
I think there's a moment in time that it's happening right now. Lord, I'm reminded of your words in Mark 1.15. The time has come. Repent and believe. And so, Holy Spirit, would you, would you begin to use this space? Would you move here? And, Lord, maybe some of us, we're, we're almost putting our hand on the doorknob, but we're holding back. I think for some of us here today, we're faced with the decision. And so, Holy Spirit, would you begin to do that stirring within our hearts and in our minds in these moments? God, you know exactly where we're at right now. Would you minister to us? Would your spirit fill this place? May your glory be revealed in this place.
Just our voices, just our voices. Let this be an upper room. Let's sing that together. Can you lead that team? Just voices, let this be an upper room. Let this be an upper room. Light the flame we burn for you. Holy, holy, holy spirit. Like a mighty rushing Pour your spirit out again, holy, holy, holy spirit. Man, Father, there is no Christian life without you, Holy Spirit. So teach us. Teach us what it's like say, have your way in me, Holy Spirit. God, I want to lift up anyone that's watching this or hears my voice that was in the shoes that I was. That said, I don't know if I want the Spirit of God. God, may we come alive in you. Would fear subside in the name of Jesus? May we be a church that just says, holy, holy, holy are you. May we walk in the fullness of what you have for us, God. May we not live a half-filled life, but a life that overflows the Spirit of God wherever we go. May a deep hunger still stir within. God, I believe you're calling our church into some deeper waters with faith. I want to be the first to say thank you. I believe in unity here that, God, we don't want to stay stagnant, but we know there's more. We need your power and your presence in our families and in our marriages. In every relationship, we need you. We need you in our own walk. Help us be a church that relies not on our own strength and might, 